Do you find yourself overwhelmed by the thought of making a career transition? I've been there and I understand the challenges you face. That's why I created the Career Compass, the ultimate guide for high achieving corporate women to make career transitions with ease. The Career Compass breaks down the decision-making process into five clear steps, helping you make savvy, empowered career decisions. Head over to karenfreeland.com forward slash career hyphen compass right now and download this invaluable resource. It's completely free and will get you on the path to a more fulfilling career. Go to karenfreeland.com forward slash career hyphen compass now. Welcome to Rock Your Reinvention, where I help high-achieving career women like you get unstuck, make your corporate exit strategy, and successfully transition to your next chapter. Hi, I'm your host, Karen Freeland, a certified life coach and corporate exit strategist. Whether you want to start a business, become a speaker, or something else, I'm here to give you the tools and strategies to shift your mindset, build your confidence, and take bold actions so you can rock your reinvention. Ready? Let's go. I'm so glad you're here with me today, and I appreciate you being here every week because we've got another great episode for you. If you're wanting to make a career move and feel like there are a lot of options on the table, today's episode is for you because we are digging into the next step in the career compass. If you joined me last week, I walked you through step one of the career compass where we identified our key criteria that was important to us for making a career move. And if you haven't listened to that episode yet, you're going to want to start there first before you jump into today's episode, because these two episodes really build on each other. The steps in the career compass are like gradually building on itself. So you can't just jump into step two if you haven't outlined step one yet. So my guidance would be to go out to karenfreeland.com forward slash career hyphen compass and download your copy of the career compass. Go listen to episode 48 and go through step one. And if you've done those two things, then you're now ready to jump in to step two, weighing your criteria. So I am on page 11 of the career compass, and you're going to see that there are two different methods for how you can weigh your criteria. But before you do that, you want to fill in at the bottom of that page, your core values, your priorities, and your out of the box criteria that you outlined in step one, because if you're like me. You've got scribbles and lines and scratch marks and ideas in the margins, like stuff's all over the place. So we want to make sure that very nicely and neatly, we can really see our top five core values, our top five life priorities, and our top five out-of-the-box criteria that we mapped out for ourselves. Okay, so once you've got that written out, There are the two methods, like I said, I'm going to walk you through both of them, but know that you don't actually have to do both unless you want. We all, right, think and look at things differently. My personal preference is the second option, but you may feel differently. You might glean a different insight by doing the first method. So just do whatever feels best for you and know that I'm going to walk through both of them. And if you want to walk through both of them, that's cool too, whatever you have the time and the capacity to do. So we're going to start by walking through method one, the points-based system on page 12. Okay, this is where you are going to rank and rate your criteria on a scale of one to five. One being it's not that important and five being like, yes, this is super important for my next career move. So in the core values, for myself, my top five were family, faith, independence slash freedom. I bucketed those together. Empowering others and health. And then I just took a moment to really reflect on a scale of one to five. Like how important is my family to me? And there's no right or wrong 
Okay. And I know that might sound weird. And some of you are like, what do you mean? Aren't I supposed to like, isn't my family supposed to be my number one priority? Supposed to according to who? Like really, don't do what you think you're supposed to do. Do what is true for you. Okay. We're there. This is a judgment free zone. So do not feel like you have to put something, whatever, right? My faith, I ranked as a five. My family, I ranked as a five. But you might be like, you know what? My faith is a three or my family is a two, whatever. And and this may depend on your season of life, right? If you're retired, divorced, and your kids are all grown and out of the house, family might not be the number one thing for you. If you're a new mom and you just brought your baby home eight months ago and you're thinking about leaving corporate because you want to be home with your baby, I'm going to bet that five is probably right up there for family, right? But maybe not. So put aside any thoughts of what you're supposed to do and do what is true for you. Let your intuition speak here, okay? Once you've filled out your core values and you've assigned those numbers, You're going to move on and do the same thing for the life priorities section and the the out-of-the-box thinking criteria section, okay? So going on from my example the other day, I knew that I wanted more creativity, more manageable hours. I thought it would be really awesome to move closer to family. I wanted to have more impact in the work that I was doing on society and really see how that translated. And I wanted something that was fully remote. So I went through and I scored these. And you know, at first when I was writing all of those things out, I thought, yeah, move closer to family so I can have help with the kids. That would be great. And then when I really started to reflect on that, I was like, my kids aren't even going to need daycare in another year, the summer care. Like they're going to be able to be home with me while I work during the summer. Do I really need that much help? Is that really why I want to move? And so I ended up changing that ranking to like a three because it really wasn't something that I wanted to base my next career move on. So anyway, you're going to go through this for yourself and ask yourself the questions about how important this is to you and come up with your own score. And once you've done that, you're going to calculate the points for each one of those categories. So for example, the core values category ranked 22 points compared to my life priorities category, which came out at 20 points compared to the out of the box criteria at 19 points. Now yours may not follow the same flow and that's okay. It doesn't have to. So you might be like, whoa, my life priorities came out at 24 and I only got a 18 in the core values or a 20 in the out of box. It really just depends on what is most important to you. So this gives you such clear guidance that you know what, if my next career move violates my core values in any way, that is not going to be a good move for me because I'm not going to be happy and satisfied because that's actually what matters to me most. And so in step three of this first method, you're basically just going to list out how these ranked for you. So again, my core values came out number one, then my life priorities, and then my out-of-the-box criteria. And that really helped me look more objectively at my career options because I knew what was truly most important to me. It's interesting, you know, nothing on here said a bigger title. For me, maybe for you it does, but... For me, it didn't. It wasn't about the title, right? I didn't even have anything on here that was related to money. So fascinating, right? But all that time that I was in corporate, I kept telling myself, the money is the most important thing. I got to get promoted. I got to earn more money. I got to get a bigger title. That's what really matters. But when I really sat down to reflect and I got honest with myself, And you've heard me say this before, I turned inward, right? I have a whole chapter in my book, Grab Life by the Dreams, about turning inward. And when I really did that, and I listened to my intuition and what my heart was telling me, I knew that those things were never going to bring me satisfaction. Doesn't mean they won't bring you satisfaction. 
but they were never going to do it for me. And so this is where I want you to get really honest with yourself as you're looking at these different categories, this different criteria, and you're going to score it honestly. Okay. So you might want to pause right here and just go ahead and fill this out for yourself and come up with your priority for your key criteria. And once you've had a chance to do that, we're going to move on to method two for weighing your criteria. So I'm now on page 13. And this actually gives you three different ways to look at your criteria by considering what is essential, what is important, and what is nice to have. So I like the essential, important, and nice to have because that just helps me figure out what are my non-negotiables or what are the things that I've got some flexibility on but really still want to heavily wait. And then what are the things that are like, yeah, it could be nice, it would be beneficial, but it's not gonna break the bank or you know, make or break a deal for me is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so we are now on page 14 and I'm gonna be filling this in with you. And you can kind of follow along and then do this for yourself. So because I did the first one, it made it the the first method, it actually made it really easy for me to fill this in because I just said, well, everything that I rated was a five to a three. So then that tells me that everything that's a five is essential. Everything that's a four is important. And everything that's a three is nice to have. But I I just did that little gut check as I was filling it in. And I was like, yeah, it was essential for me when I was thinking about leaving corporate that I had fully remote work, that I was able to focus on my family, my faith, have a bigger impact and see how my work was actually impacting others, and that I was able to work on writing my book and leaving a legacy. The things I put in the important category were my independence and freedom. Yes, I was craving that. But even if I just had a job in corporate that gave me a little more freedom and flexibility, that would have been a welcome change. Empowering others. You know, that could have been through empowering a team of people who worked under me or through coaching. There was a lot of different ways that I could have empowered others. And that was something that was important to me. So I put that in the middle category. Health, creativity, autonomy, and unlimited PTO. And when you're the boss, you get as much PTO as you want. So again, those things were all put in the important category. And I know we haven't really gotten to our options yet, right, of what your career pivot might be. That's going to come in step three, but I'm just giving you some of the context as I was looking at this through my lens of I'm not happy in my job. I want to make a move. Where am I going to go? What are my options? Right. I had that kind of already swirling around in my head. And then under category of nice to have, I put time for volunteering and cultivating my faith, having a company that had a strong ERG, moving closer to my family, and having something with manageable hours. And what's interesting is I know I said fully remote work and manageable hours, you know, fully remote work was a priority. I wanted to be home five days a week. But one of the things I also know about myself is that I was a very much a go-getter. Like I I knew that even if I went into entrepreneurship, I was still going to be working odd hours sometimes because that's just my nature, right? I'm so like, oh, I want, if I if I get an idea in my head and I want to do something, I'll just do it and stay up late to make it happen or whatever because I'm passionate about it. So that's why manageable hours for me, I was like, yeah, that would be nice, but I can be pretty flexible in my own business So if I want to work on weekends or nights, that's fine because it's for me, but that probably means I was doing something else during the day that fulfilled me in other ways. So anyway, I don't want to give you too much context here, but those were just some of the things and the ways that I decided what went in what category. And this is obviously going to look different for everybody else. So it's your turn now, right? You already did a lot of the hard work of figuring out what your core values were, what your life priorities are, and your out-of-the-box criteria was. And so now it's just a matter of really taking a second look at that and going, okay, which of these things are most essential, most important, and the nicest to have? Okay, so go ahead and fill that out now. Again, you might just want to pause this 
you'll probably definitely need to pause this and then pick back up once you've had a chance to map out page 14, the categorization method. Okay, now that you've got that filled out, before you go any further, I want you to grab a journal and ask yourself the following. What insights have I uncovered through this process? I really want you to dig deep here. Allow yourself to explore some of the insights, some of the ahas, maybe some of the realizations you were not expecting or quite frankly, an inconvenient truth that you wish you hadn't uncovered. <laughs> you'll, you'll thank me later, but I know sometimes when you start really looking at these things, there could be some inconvenient truths that pop up. And I also want you to ask yourself, is this list true for me? And that's like with the capital M, okay? Not true for anyone else, not true for society, not true for what your parents used to tell you was important. Is it true for you? If it is, good work. That's awesome. If not, just ask yourself, what needs to change? And then change it. Make it true for you. Find those little things that you're like, oh, you know what, Karen, I just put family because I thought that was, was what I was supposed to do. You know what? I put financial abundance because I grew up poor, but honestly, I don't really care that much. As long as I have enough to get by, as long as I'm comfortable, I don't need the excess. Okay, great. Find those little spots of truth for you and make the adjustments that you need to make. And then I want you to ask yourself, if I had everything on the essential list, would I feel fulfilled? Why or why not? I really want you to explore that. Okay, voila, you're getting so much closer to completing the career compass. And that is a really big deal. Here's why. Most people download a free resource and guess what they do with it? Zip, zilch. Nothing. They just like they leave it. It just sits on their desktop, collects virtual dust, or maybe they even print it out and let it collect real dust. They don't do anything with it. So I'm so proud of you because you're an action taker and you are doing the work. You're not going to settle for being stuck and frustrated another moment. That, my friend, is how you rock your reinvention. That is how you reclaim your power you do the work. So congratulations. Seriously, this is totally worth celebrating. But I don't want you to stop here, okay? Schedule some time right now in your calendar. Pull out your phone, pull up your app on your desktop, wherever you are that you're listening to this. And I want you to schedule time to complete steps three through five. Okay, this starts to get very plug and play here for you. Because now we're just getting into the part where we're filling in the decision matrix and you've already got all the criteria. Now it's just about mapping that criteria to your career move options. Look, I mentioned this last time and I'm going to extend the invite again. If you want to hop on a free career compass check-in call, you can book that right now via Calendly. The link is in the show notes. We're going to walk through your career compass, you and me, one-on-one, -on -one, 30 minutes. We're going to discuss the next steps to bring your career decision to fruition. We're going to explore anything that might be holding you back from career bliss and make sure that we answer any questions that you have about this process. I don't bite. If you've never met me before or been on a call with me, or if you're not in my Facebook group and you haven't interacted with me, I know it can feel a little weird. Like, is she serious? Can I really get on her calendar and hang with her for 30? Yes, you can. I have met with so many people cold that I've never met before. And they're like, wow, you were so easy to talk to. Thank you so much for listening. Wow. I said things that I've never told anyone before. Like you will feel seen and heard. I am here to support you because I never want another woman to stay stuck like I did and feel that pain and that hopelessness. It's no fun and you deserve better. So please tap in. Let me know how I can help you book the call. And if by some chance you got this far and you still haven't downloaded the career compass, 
Okay. That's your first order of business. Go download it. KarenFreeland.com forward slash career hyphen compass. And I have one last piece of exciting news before I let you go complete steps three through five and book your call. I have just decided to do a free career pivot challenge coming up the week of October 7th. So stay tuned for details. Put a placeholder on your calendar. I'm thinking noon every day that week. And I'm going to be sharing the registration information shortly. So you don't want to miss that. It's going to be epic. I'm going to equip you with everything that you need to make the career pivot of your dreams. I'm going to break it down into easy chunks, just like we did over these last two episodes. And the benefit of coming live is that you're going to have the ability to actually interact with me in real time. It's going to be fun. So save the date for the week of October 7th. We are going to be getting together live. There'll be registration information, the Zoom party, all that good stuff so that we can really help you rock your reinvention and get you the clarity you need to make this career transition once and for all. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're inspired to take action by committing to one of the tips or strategies we talked about in today's episode. If you want more accountability and support, I've got your back. Book a complimentary Empowered Exit Strategy call today. Visit karenfreeland.com to learn more and book your 45-minute session. Until next time, stay fabulous.